The Tomb of the Reliefs would be one of the most famous of these Etruscan tombs. And what you're seeing is a tomb that would have contained several generations of a single family. So again, this is that sort of nuclear unit, the children of these two Etruscans, going out several generations. And so we have a lot of space to put bodies because they do have more children. Those children tend to die young. Remember, about 50% of people will not make it to the age of 10. So a lot of uh, that going on. That being said, what we're seeing is a tomb that is created underneath one of the uh, mounds that we see in the necropolis. And it's carved out of tufa. And then they would sometimes plaster that volcanic stone so it looks a little bit more like an average home. What they're doing is they're creating a tomb with painted stucco reliefs. In other words, these are the relief pieces are not all carved out of the stone. Many of them are actually plaster that's been added to the surface and sculpted while wet. And these are sculptures of domestic objects. So basically they're creating a house for the dead. These are all the things they would need in death because many of these societies believed that the afterlife was very similar to our own. And so you would have the need for things like cauldrons and other materials. In the center here, we see an image of a three-headed dog. Now remember, dogs are always good in art. They mean something faithful. They mean a guardian. They mean something positive. And here we see the three-headed dog. This is Sybaris, the three-headed dog who guards the underworld, perhaps an indication of a passage from life into death. Of course, you're in a tomb, so that's going to be necessary. Oftentimes, people will compare this, this tomb, the Tomb of the Reliefs, to, for example, an Egyptian tomb. Here in the lower right, you see an original picture of what Tutankhamun's tomb looked like when it was first found. And we see that he's buried with actual objects. Beds, tables, chariots, chairs, all sorts of materials, the actual things. But the comparison is a false dichotomy. It's false. Because in one, we're talking about a pharaoh. In the other, we're talking about sort of an upper middle class likely family, maybe a, a, an aristocratic family. Amongst the Etruscans, they simply can't give up those materials. Why would I bury someone with a perfectly good pot? Or a perfectly good axe? Or whatever else? No, I'm going to bury them with symbols of these things that they can then use in the afterlife. Whereas in Egypt, they did the same thing. It just so happens that in Egypt, we tend to talk about the pharaoh who has immense wealth and so can be buried with these things. But your average Egyptian family is burying them with food and wine, maybe, and not that much of it. They're not going to be burying them with everything they need for a home. And there's something else to note. There is a depiction of a cat. And that cat right here is depicted beneath a rope, a machete, and an axe. All things that the Etruscans knew they needed in order to maintain control over our evil overlords of the feline species. Okay, in reality, the cat is there because it was a tool. It was there to prevent rodents, which would have been very common in ancient homes. But I prefer to believe that it's an Etruscan warning that our cat overlords will eventually stop pooping in boxes and take over the world.